hi. Good afternoon, uh, Chloe Thomas. Hi, Bobby. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, my group um, as someone I have worked with in the, in the past. You, you've been a client of mine, um, etc. I wanted to get a bit of an intro from you as to who you are and what you're doing, and, and then we can go on to the course that you've you've launched this week. Yeah, sure. So, uh, hello, everybody. Great to be uh, to be chatting to you. Um, I've been working in e-commerce since about 2002, 2003. And throughout that time, really focusing on the marketing and the business strategy of it all. I've written or I've been running e-commerce master plan for about four and a half years now. In that time, I've written four books about e-commerce and how to, to succeed across the marketing, the business structures and the most recent book, which is Customer Persuasion, which is all about taking your customer through various of the life stages of e-commerce. So from inquirer to buyer to repeat buyer and so forth. Fairly Stuff we're all familiar with, but there's an awful lot of ideas in the book about how to go about doing that. And it was really out of that book, I think one of the strongest strategies that comes out of it is all about getting the email sign up and then getting someone to buy from your welcome sequence, which is the course we're going to be talking about shortly. The other thing I should tell you about me is I also host the e-commerce master plan podcast, which is completely free to air. You can get it on iTunes, etc, etc. And it is where I interview each week a different e-commerce business. So, um, so that's kind of kind of the key things about me, I guess. Did I miss anything, Bobby? No, that's, that 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 covers it. I mean, um, so we've got a bit of a history. We've worked together in the past in the world of uh, mail order and e-commerce, where it all started, um, and uh, so that's where our relationship has sort of blossomed over eight odd years or, or something no, it's, like that. It's probably. more than that. That was when mm. um, that was when I was working on Pia Jewelry and Museum Selection, yeah. which yeah. would be. 2005 I think oh so it's so about 12 years, years. you're you wow. out by four <laughs> just four uh, yeah yeah so now we, we've known each other for quite a way, fair while and also um I've had the experience of hiring you to help me with my email marketing strategy yeah. this was back in sort of what 2008 2009 oh, when that, I was that long ago? yeah when I was e-commerce manager of the holding company and uh, when I arrived there, they had no clue about email marketing. They, their email marketing efforts were dismal, to say the least. Um, I understood the concepts, and because having worked for an e-commerce solutions provider, I understood the concepts, but I knew that I still needed to hire someone who was an expert at actually implementing it, and hence I got in touch with you and you helped devise strategy for me. So that's kind of where our relationship has evolved and where I've actually used your services in the past. Yeah, and, um, and it, it always scares me when a company has no real email strategy because uh, the latest stats out of a company called Castora, who are over in the States, they track the traffic to lots of e-commerce businesses stateside and they fa their November 2016 report, which is the most recent one they've, they've launched, is the, or released even, is that 25% of all e-commerce sales are driven through the email channel. 25%. And, um, and it's properly scary the number of businesses I anecdotally come across. Now I have some stats around it, but who I anecdotally come across who just aren't using email. Um, it's just, just, just scary given that there's that much potential out there. And it's interesting because when we were both in the days when you were at Museum Selection, etc., and I was selling e-commerce platforms, email was one of the kind of top channels, even at that stage. And it has evolved, it's gotten stronger, and um, and it's still a solid channel to really be promoting yourself, isn't it? Well, and I, I think it's sign-ups and welcome sequences we've all been talking about, in theory, since 2004 and before that. Since email marketing kind of started out, we've been talking about all these great sequences and campaign structures and triggered and automation and all of this. And it's really only been in the last couple of years that it's become cost effective for even the smallest retailer to be able to do it. And it's it's um and that's that's a brilliant thing because it means finally we can stop banging on about the theory and actually help retailers to put it in place in order to build their sales. You know, what I talk about in the course can all be done on MailChimp. You know, it doesn't require thousands of pounds of consultancy, of build, of HTML design, which it did 
um, you know, 10 years ago, which it did five years ago. And on some platforms still does. But, um, (laughs) you know, that's a that's a choice. Uh, (laughs) There are many platforms out there where you can do this very simply, and very easily with drag and drop builders. And the majority of people are, are on those platforms. So, I mean, it affects people like myself. I mean, I'm, I'm in a position myself right now where I'm looking at email marketing, I'm looking at putting it together. And I'm in a position myself as having launched myself as the digital career coach and putting various services together. I'm in that position where I don't have the kind of budget that the brands that we used to both consult had in terms of putting the email marketing strategy and creating a database and so on. So I'm also probably similar to about, I think the stat is about 60% of the workforce now mm. are independents. They're brands who've gone independent to either sell products or sell services, and they need to market themselves. They are creating their services, but they now need to know how to sell and market themselves. Mm. And email is a big part of that. So I am your potential kind of customer for this again. And the kinds of people that I'm working with, both individuals who are looking to promote themselves in their careers but also small businesses looking to promote their business really need a course like this um so it's quite important i think it, it's it's interesting this question i get asked a little bit is you know i don't run an e-commerce business is this course still for me because you know all the examples are from the e-commerce world and the thing is you know i because of the business model of e-commerce master plan my business and business models of other businesses I've worked for, I kind of straddle the world of B2B and the world of retail. And I like mm-hmm. to take the best from each and cross pollinate, um, yes. and you know, take what works in one and see how we can make that work in the other. And really the, the inspiration for this course and the lessons which are within it are inspired as much by the retail world as they are by the B2B information marketer, um, self-promotion world, I suppose, in, in yes. many ways. So it, it's, it really is a theory that can work for everybody. And I should also say, you know, within this, I'm not saying this is your template. This is how, this is exactly how it should look. You know, put this okay. here, that here, that there, do five, do this. Because actually that's not right. Even even if you simply look at the world of e-commerce, that's not, there isn't one template that works for everybody. You know, yeah. um, on the on the subject of, of the welcome sequences, and I've literally just been looking at these, these stats this morning before, as we record this. 32% of the businesses we surveyed to help pull together the resources to create the course, 32% of them only send one, one welcome sequence. Four, 3% of them send six. Okay. And there's good reasons and bad reasons. And some of those are only sending one, in my opinion, should be sending more. And some of those who are sending six have really gone into overkill and they should just be letting their broadcast seat yeah, their broadcast newsletters just just do the do the do for them so it's it's very much a one size fits all one size does not fit all model which is why the course i've created it's not about here's a template fill it in it's about mm. here's the questions and the process you need to go through in your own business to work out what should go into your welcome sequence to work out how you should encourage yourself to get those email signups and whilst the examples are e-commerce the method can be used just as well for the for the uh, the consultant and B two B world, lead gen world, as it can for the for the drive the sales world. Okay. Sorry, that, Bob. No. That was a terribly long winded answer. Was that okay? No. That's all right. What, what actually oh. what what I'm what I'm going to do is for the purpose of both myself, even though I know what email marketing is, but mainly for the purpose of people that I'm kind of working with, is let's break that down into yeah. let's go through cutting out some of the jargon, getting to what it is and the crux of it and why people should be using it as either individuals or businesses. Uh, And many of the businesses are individuals, in fact. So what is email marketing? right now as it currently exists as it currently exists email there's kind of two versions of email marketing that exist at the moment there's the the version that we all hope for and pray for and talk about which is where we're sending our our customers our list relevant communications that they want to hear about um and then there's the reality which is even some of the uk us's biggest retailers are still just sending out the same email to their entire list twice a week with a whopping great discount on it so that's kind of where email marketing is at the moment um the good thing about that is there's a massive opportunity for anyone out there to take a huge leap forwards and take over their competitors by simply putting in some pretty straightforward campaigns and sequences which is you know which is why i put this course together to help people kind of take a march on the big boys 
Okay, so what do you mean by sequences? So I've heard um, concepts like a nurturing sequence. So what, what's a nurturing sequence? Okay, well, I use the word sequences and campaigns and automation kind of interchangeably. They're all okay. one in the same thing. Basically, what I'm talking about when I talk about any campaign, any sequence, any kind of automation is some marketing activity that goes out triggered based on what a user's done. So it okay. could be that the user has signed up to your email. So then you send the same sequence campaign of emails mm -hmm. or communications to that person. If they sign up today, they get it. If they sign up tomorrow, they get it. If they sign up in a week's time, they get it. And it's the same content. So it's kind of, it's okay. very much automated. Um, Is that personalized? Can be, doesn't have to be. Okay. Um, when it comes to a nurture sequence, a nurture sequence is not necessarily a welcome sequence, although a welcome sequence is a nurture sequence. So um, with a nurture sequence, you're nurturing someone to get them ready to buy something from you. Think about nurturing a plant so it grows into a tree um, mm -hmm. or sapling so it goes into a tree would be more accurate. But it's so a welcome sequence is a form of nurture, but sometimes you might have nurture campaigns that are built off, you know, they bought a small product so you're nurturing them to get them ready for a large product so mm -hmm. um yeah so that would be that would be what a nurture is and in terms of a nurture sequence mm. how many steps are there in a nurture sequence? How, how much work how long is, is a piece of string um what's an ideal there isn't one there isn't one okay the ideal is however much communication you need to get that to get a substantial number of your customers to convert. Um, you know, I said about those those uh, welcome email uh, mm -hmm. numbers earlier. There's the businesses I've been working, actually, yeah, slightly different. Let's, let's give you a couple of, of real life stats rather than simply who's doing what because they're not necessarily doing it well. Um, yeah. But a, a couple of businesses, one business I had on the podcast called Project Repat, they use their welcome sequence to convert 20% of their email signups to buyers. Sorry, 25% of their email signups to buyers. Now, their welcome sequence lasts for about seven, eight emails. It's fairly okay. short. It goes out over a couple of weeks, but they're converting one in four of the people who sign up. Nice. Um, I know they test it, so I'm assuming they've discovered that eight is the number that they need to send. Um, there's a, another business who I work with who I can't name. But um, they've been really pushing their email signups recently through the combination of their broadcasts uh, and their welcome sequences. Over the period of six months from when someone signs up, they're, they're converting 22% of people in the first six months. Now, their yeah. broadcasts are really high quality. You know, they're packed full of social proof, interesting content, good reasons to buy, things that remove the barriers to purchase, you know, so they're encouraging the person really down that down that sales when, funnel. When you, when you say broadcast, what do you mean by that? Broadcast, I mean, is the kind of your regular newsletters, the things you, you broadcast out to the whole of your okay. list. So that's one of the reasons why a welcome campaign can sometimes be very, very short, you know, down to just the one email, because if your broadcasts are doing a great job, okay then why create static content to do the same thing that your broadcasts are doing with relevant, timely, up-to-the-minute content, you know? Okay. But I think in the case of the welcome sequence, everybody should have at least one. Nurture sequence, well, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Okay. Um, and how do you get people to sign up in the first place? Ah, well, you have to give them a really compelling offer. Okay. And you also need to make it possible for them to sign up. Freaky, scary stat. Um, of those who we uh, who we surveyed to create the content for the course, I'm sorry, I'm looking down at my stats, just double checking <laughs> I've got the number right. Um, like 14% of them didn't even, could, could we not find any way to get onto their email list? That is crazy. It's, it's really it's crazy. Scary. And from, you know, as Bobby, you'll probably know from being in this industry as well, it is a constant frustration that I see someone at a conference and they're talking really well about their marketing. So I want to go and sign up to their emails and I can't find any way to sign up for their emails without me to buy something. Guilty as charged. Yeah. I got nothing at the moment. I'm working on it. <laughs> but, it's, but, you know, when you're, when you're a big retailer who's been asked yeah. to speak at a conference and I can't find a way to sign up to your email, that is just insane. Um, is it, and there's uh, stats out. I forget who they're by. 
can't, I haven't got this one to hand, but 92% of people, um, 92% of people do not come to a retail website to buy. They come to do something else. They come to research, to look at it, to try and find a gift for someone, to find out a piece of information. So you've got to, you know, you, large proportions of people are not coming to buy in the first place. So we have to, you know, the emails, email gives us another service to do them. So make it easy for people to sign up. So put it in your footer, um, put it on your contact us page, on your about us page, make it findable. So you have multiple sign up boxes for the same email list? Yes. Okay. Um, and then if you really want to make it work, then use pop-ups. I'm aware pop-ups are hated by many people, but yeah. pop-ups do not have a negative impact on user experience in the way that you may fear. And they have a massive impact on um, sign-up rates. So I put a very simple sign-up on my website, asking people to download a free ebook or, or compelling people with a free ebook offer. And it took my conversion rate on my site to sign up from 0.5% of visitors to 5% of visitors. Wow. Okay. Just by putting the same offer that had been running on the site for the last few months, put it on a pop-up and uh, that was an exit pop-up. So it's a, so it's kind of your least intrusive pop-up as someone's leaving the website, up it comes. Um, I think I put something like a 30-day repeat cookie on it. So if someone dismisses it, they ain't going to see it for another 30 days. It's, okay. I go really, really unob unobjectionable. <laughs> That's a totally terrible word, but I go very unobjectionable with my pop-ups and it has a huge impact on signups. I mentioned about Project Repat earlier. They optimise their sign-up, uh, their pop-up, and they get 8% of site visitors to sign up. Okay. So you've, but you've got to have the right offers. There's a whole testing process to find the right offer to put in your sign-up. So that's all the kind of, the, that's the sign-up offer. There's some sort of a lead magnet that you're giving away for free um, to get them to sign up in the first place. What, what is that lead magnet? Can that be anything or is that sort of tips, tricks? What, what is it? Well, the, the compelling, I like to think of a compelling offer rather than a lead magnet in the world of, okay. of e-commerce because often lead magnets tend to be things like checklists, PDF downloads, um, email courses, that sort of thing, which often doesn't, you know, if you're trying to sell shoes, it doesn't really yeah. relate. Um, some In some areas of, of, um, of e-commerce, it does. You know, if you're selling running shoes, then, you know, a PDF download of this year's half marathons is a really good idea. Um, yeah. But it, it doesn't compute for everybody. So I tend to talk about the the different types of compelling reason and what you've got as your compelling reasons are um, you can of course do a discount so sign up and get 15% off your first order get free PMP off your first order all those kind of things um, from my research about 25% of retailers do this about one in four um, yeah. of course the danger with that is that you're hiring people or you're getting people onto your list who are purely interested in discounts which is not yeah. what we want so we might not be getting quality but it, there's no harm in testing it um, you might be doing a giveaway, so you might be doing like a lead magnet, PDF download, email um, email course, that sort of thing, which is starting to get a little bit of prevalence in, in the e-commerce world, huge in my world. Um, if there yeah. wasn't a freebie, I don't think I'd get any signups at all. Really? Um, okay. And then competitions as well can work in e-commerce as well as elsewhere. I find I get lower sign-up rates from competitions than I do from a freebie, um, okay. which sometimes boggles my mind but there we go the thing with the competition is you'll be really careful of what the prize is the prize has to be relevant yeah. to your list you know um if you're me don't give away flights to new york because that's really not gonna recruit the right people and it could bankrupt yeah. me um <laughs> which wouldn't be so good uh then so those are kind of like the three lesser ones in the world of e-commerce the biggest one in the world of e-commerce is simply a compelling reason to sign up Sign okay. up for great content and latest offers and news. That's okay. what seven, nearly 70% of e-commerce businesses are using as their call to action for their sign up is simply sign up to us. We're great um, in more words. Um, that doesn't yeah. tend to work quite so much in the, in the space that you and I operate in, Bobby. We tend to have to yeah. give away a PDF or something. Um, but, it's, but it's in the world of e-commerce, always start off with that free giveaway. Yeah. In fact, when I was at the, the holding company and we employed you to do our email marketing campaigns, um, I use deals which were amazing, um, you know, buy X amount and get free delivery. 
uh, versus 20% off. And it's amazing how many people went for the free delivery versus the 20% off mm. when logically speaking, 20% off gave them more money back. Um, but it was, it was amazing, you know, testing different campaigns and what actually worked. Yeah, there's a, there's a huge amount of testing to find the right model for your customer base. I mean, there's some, you know, some common rules that go across it all, you know, like mm -hmm. probably offering some money off or a money value or a free PMP will probably give you a better sign up rate than just saying, we're going to send you great content, sign up, but it might not be worth it, the amount of money you give away compared to the, you know, the cost per email that comes through on that. So, it, it does require a fair amount of testing, which is why, you know, I say there is, I'm not providing a template, I'm providing a process, a system to work through to find yeah. the right sign up method for your business, to find the right welcome campaign for your business and put that in place. And as I said, you know, if you can, if you can do this, you can double your sign ups mass or, or even higher. If you follow this method, you can, uh, you can be converting 20% plus of the people who sign up in the first few months. And that's, that's pretty good going, really. That's yeah. quite a nice, reliable income stream that actually doesn't require a lot of work once you've done the testing and setup. It just ticks over for you. Okay. Is there any other way to build your list to get more like hundreds or thousands of people on the list besides them coming to the website and you giving something away? Yeah, there's lots, lots of really interesting ways of building the list outside your website. The most obvious one I'm seeing people test at the moment in the kind of like the, the cool kid on the block, as it were, is the world of the Facebook lead ad. This is an okay. advert you can run on Facebook that the person signs up to your list right there and then. Um, mm -hmm. So I've seen people get the cost per email down as low as two pounds, which is better than buying clicks potentially, but it's it's one to test. Do those people convert or not? Um, okay. and, is, and therefore, is, is it worth it to you? It can be. It can be incredibly worthwhile uh, from some of the results I've seen. Um, then we have also in the advertising space, there's a number of businesses who will offer you the ability to advertise on, say, the order confirmation page of an e-commerce site. So therefore, you're getting somebody who's just completed a purchase, encourage them to sign up to you, and then you pay per okay. sign up again. There's other sites that will run competitions to find people who look like your type of customer and you pay per thousand people you capture. Um, so there's got, those, those are kind of like the only cold acquisition methods I'd go for. Uh, and then the other thing which you can do, of course, is to partner up with other people. You know, okay. So you find someone who operates with a similar customer base to yourself and you run a competition and you both promote it to your user bases and hopefully lots of their people sign up as well as lots of your people sign up and both of you get a list boom that can be quite a quick way to add a couple of thousand and then one of my clients did um she went along to a big show in uh, london she does uh, she sells fashion products so she went along to one of the um the stylist magazine that gives it gets given out free on the tube she went along to their show in november right. had a stand didn't sell off the stand but had big boards saying text your email address to this to win this and i uh, okay. got got over a thousand signups during the course of the day and that's made a huge Fantastic. difference to her business and yeah. looking at the whole piece has been very cost effective too so there's lots okay. of creative yeah. ways you can do it yeah okay Okay. And what about then the systems? We mentioned earlier that back in the day when we were both sort of in e-commerce sites, etc., we the, the systems were quite large, quite expensive, um, and it was really for corporates, whereas in this day and age, 60% of the workforce selling jewellery or fashion from home, etc., still need to use email marketing. How are the systems changed? I remember that we used to have, if we wanted to do an email capture, we had to build the form in the website and then we had to do like a manual download to get the data out of the website and add it into the email system, which meant the welcome email had to be sent by the website, which generally meant it was minging um, and really untrackable. We had no stats and all the rest of it. These days, you know, you get the, you design the email sign up in the email system plug that code into the website and ping everything goes straight into your system in real time you give give customers a much better experience plus generally you'll get a drag and drop builder for doing these things so you can make even those of us who can't really do html can put together a really good looking email we can then drag the pieces to visually create our sequence of events for our campaign 
So it's become hugely more user intuitive and most of this technology is just straight out the box with the majority of email systems out there. You can even do a certain amount of it with the free version of MailChimp, which okay. you know, which is a is a go to for many people I know. Okay. And does your course cover these systems? Because I know in my own research, I'm one of those people that has ended up trying to research all the different systems and figure out which one's right for me if I'm gonna put in my own money into subscribing you know i could have gone for the free system but then i understand i I have now learned that because of the number of contacts i have it's kind of not worth it and also if i want to do anything automated i can't do it on the free version i anyway so i have to buy into something do do you kind of go through the systems and the pros and cons Uh, the focus of the course is about helping people work out how to do the difficult bit and the difficult bit is working out how to structure their signups and what to put into a welcome sequence and how to build that welcome sequence to get okay. to get the, the results. Of course, tech is is a big issue. So there are some bonus tech tutorials, which mm-hmm. um, at the point where this all goes live next Monday, there will definitely be recommendations of software to use for pop up integrations for um, email platforms. Both of those are going to be in there on day one, plus a couple of other little widgety things that I've got going on. Um, okay. So there will be recommendations that will undoubtedly, because it's being done by me, I, you can tell I haven't quite recorded those yet, uh, that undoubtedly, because it's being done by me, will include things to think about. Um, okay. And it won't be a go here. This is the only place you should go. It'll be options within that. Um, those will include um, things for WordPress and Shopify as a basic because a lot of people I know are out there on WooCommerce which of course is the WordPress plat- e-commerce platform so that's all going to be covered um, okay. and at the point where we go live there won't be any how to set up your welcome sequence on MailChimp type stuff but there will be content which links you to the MailChimp guide of how to set up your mm-hmm. welcome sequence it's an evolving course though so the feedback I get from the people on the course if they're like Chloe we need you to show me how to do exactly this in Woocom- in um not WooCommerce in Mailchimp or a another yeah. then um then undoubtedly I'll end up doing that at some point but but once it's gone live content additions will be based on need to knows um or yeah. on what what the uh, the people in the course want. So you, you buy into the course but you're given the opportunity from the feedback that you get from your clients you may add in extra elements to the course based upon popular demand. Yeah, and it's um, there's within the course itself, uh, you know, as you're watching each video, there's comment sections underneath. So I'll be monitoring those comment sections uh, and coming back with answers. And if if the answer to that question requires a video being added, a video will be added. Uh, you know, if it, if it makes sense to add it as a module, it will get added as a module. And the same yeah. thing in the Facebook group that goes alongside it, too. Um, it's just it's just the right way to do things. You know, if there's something which people are struggling with, then. Yeah. I think I think for me when I when I've been doing my own research it's that technical bit that's my stumbling block that's personally for me that's where it's kind of what do I do how do I create it what platform do I use how much is that all going to cost which one if I'm going to invest that kind of money which one should I go for what are the comparisons if I start with one Am I going to have to swap to another one as I evolve or not? You know, what, what's the best way? Or am I overthinking it? In my case, I'm probably over, overthinking <laughs> Well, the majority of people who are going to be signing up to this have already got their email system sorted. Um, and, you know, it's the fact of the matter is you can do this with a free MailChimp account. Okay. So it's uh, it's pretty easy to do. And then, of course, you, you can spend more and you can upgrade, but only at the time when it's right for your business. You know, if you're seeing that that you're getting great results, but you, you're pretty certain you get them better if you could add this into the mix, then that's the time to upgrade. You know, if you're going to become a multi-million pound turnover business, you probably don't want to still be using MailChimp because there's more money that, that you could make if you had greater levels of functionality. Okay. So what are the key take homes from your course what, what do you want people to really be learning or what will they learn from your course more to the point what they're going to learn is how to create the email sign up form that works for them that should yeah. be signing up at least five percent of their website traffic they're also going to learn a load of ways to get email from uh, email signups rather 
from people who haven't quite yet made it to their website. So big email list growth. And then they're also going to get how to build the welcome campaign that really, really works for converting their customers, what to put in it, how to build it and uh, how to structure it. Plus all those little techie pieces of advice, such as how many emails to do, how many, um, how many, how frequently to send them and, uh, and things of that ilk. Okay. And is there sort of con content guides or content strategy, how to think about what they should write about in their own particular industries or? Oh, hugely so. There's an awful lot yeah. about that. Yeah. Because I would say that that was a, a really key point of setting up any kind of email strategy and, and getting it out there is what it is that you're going to write and how you should write it almost. Well, and it's, it's what I find through talking to people is the number one reason they don't have a welcome sequence or for that matter, a uh, an about us page that has more than their address on it is because they can't work out what to say on it. So, mm. um, you know, I knew that was going to be a big part of it. So a lot of the information around the Rather Than Welcome campaign is about trying to work out what you should be saying, what the objective is for that welcome campaign and how you're going to convey that to the customer. Okay, that's good. And as the, as the area that I'm going down, being the digital career coach and providing kind of virtual recruitment services, um, I'd like to be able to promote email marketing and your course to both sort of candidates looking to promote themselves and using email marketing as a self-promotion tool to brands who obviously are attracting people but also selling their products and services and and learning to do business development how to use email marketing for business development um, so there's a number of different avatars from my own audience that I would I would think that email marketing is a tool and a, and a strategy they should use. Um, and they may have all, always thought it was just for people selling products, but it's not. And, and it is a tool that they can use. And hopefully this is a bit of an insight into email marketing and your course will then take them through how to actually do it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, um, if, unless there's anything else that you think I haven't covered in terms of, email marketing or, or what you're doing. And um, other than that, I think that's been a, a pretty good uh, conversation. Sounds good to me. Thanks, Bobby. It's been a, an absolute pleasure chatting with you about it all. It's been good. Good. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. Chloe. <laughs>